As apex predators, sharks are infamous for their sense of smell. They are so sophisticated that some species can distinguish chemicals at a dilution of one part per billion. They don't breathe like we do, so their nostrils are completely dedicated to smell. The nostril cavity is lined with super sensitive receptor cells and their olfactory bulbs can be the largest part of their brain. All of this adds up to a predator that may be able to smell you from miles away. But what do they do with that information? There's little real world data, so we're here to see what happens when a former NASA scientist who put robots on Mars decides to tackle the problem. I've never actually seen a shark in the wild, only on Shark Week, so I'm kind of nervous, but also pretty excited. Mark is meeting me 20 miles off the coast of Grand Bahama Island at a shark sanctuary known as Tiger Beach. This place is filled with sharks and it's a perfect spot for Mark's experiment. What's up? G'day Mark. Dude, there's sharks! That's sharks, Damn we have man. sharks. Mark has brought a bunch of high-tech stuff for this experiment, all custom made by him and his team back in California. Okay, so we've got seawater as our control, fish oil, have urine, and cow's blood. Let's get it. So basically what we wanted to do is we wanted to start all of the boards at the same time, so it was like a controlled experiment. So to do that, this is basically a big fat remote control and then it communicates via RF. Once we have the surfboards out there and anchored, we just hit a button here, which is go time, and then all the boards start pumping out at the speed that we've described them to pump out at. And they'll go for exactly one hour. If you have any issues, then I could just have Luke troubleshoot it. Here we go. Operation shark bait test thing commence. Three, two, one. All right, so everything is rolling. The experiment is underway. We'll let them go for an hour, just dripping stuff out. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, Mark, we've confirmed that all four boards are working correct. I can see a blood trail as far as I can see on the blood board. We're gonna head back to the boat just so we're not a variable in this experiment. 10 minutes into the experiment, and there's not a lot of action at any of the surfboards. So, so far it's pretty interesting, I mean, We've shown if you have a massive cut and you're bleeding out and there's this many sharks within like 50 yards of you that they're kind of like meh. So like already that's an interesting finding, right? You'd think a little bit of blood and there'd just be a massive swarm, but that's not the case so far. As time progresses, there is the occasional passerby, but none of the sharks show much interest in getting close to the boards. But over time, the blood starts to attract smaller fish, and this could be an attractant for larger predators. Well, it's only been 20 minutes. Yeah. The sharks are still kind of hanging around here, but the ones who are scoping out the other sensor in the water, they're hitting that blood board. Yeah, sure. like there's one out there now. Yeah, so you can see him. He's following, see that shark? He's yeah. following that trail That's right That's where now. the trail goes. Yep. He's gonna hit it. No way! That's so cool! <laughs> are you serious? 20 minutes into the experiment and sharks are starting to hone in on the blood board while the control, fish oil and urine are largely ignored. So, you just get a much better like bird's eye view up here, but you see not a lot of love for my pee. I don't know why I find that kind of offensive, but I'm just a little hurt. A few, maybe two sharks at the fish oil. But certainly downstream of the blood, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sharks maybe. You could totally see which way the current's going because downstream of the blood board, there's probably like 10 sharks. And so they're just kind of checking it out and then they swim up the blood trail to find it terminate, uh, probably very disappointingly at a fiberglass surfboard. The blood board has not only attracted a lot of sharks, it has attracted a wide variety of species, including tiger sharks, lemon sharks, and Caribbean reef sharks. Okay, we're almost done. Three, two, one.
The motors have stopped. Our experiment is done. If I had to guess right now, it really looks like the blood board got the most hits. The real question, now that we've shown that there's certainly some interest in the blood, is like how much blood is interesting? Because that was cow's blood, right? That was cow's blood. You want to do human blood? I want to try human blood. <laughs> so we know sharks are definitely attracted to blood, but now we're going to test just how much uh, really would attract them. And we've upgraded to real human blood. So we have three surfboards. One will let out a drop once every 15 minutes. One will let out a drop once a minute. And then the third one is just salt water because it's a control. And this is to test the whole one drop two miles away thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because if they don't go for it and it's like 30 yards away, then there's no way they would smell it in a vast ocean and come track you down, right? You're free! With the surfboards in place, it's time to start experiment two. Starting in three, two, one, commence! And now we'll just see what the sharks do. Okay, blood's working. Awesome. And what do you expect? This is NASA grade design engineering right here, so it better work. Forty minutes into it, the drone crew. What are we seeing? Yeah, it's really interesting. Unlike the previous experiment, the human blood seems to be not drawing nearly as many sharks. As right. And you see, how often is that dripping blood out? About once a minute, you see the big drop of blood coming through. Oh, cool. And then what happens? It just it like just dis it drifts back and dissipates, but no animals are attracted. Interesting. So yeah, we'll see. It's hard to call right now, but qualitatively, it definitely looks like there's way less interest. So that's a very remarkable sort of observation that I think goes counterintuitive to what most people think if they have blood in the water. Five, four, three, two, one. Experiment's over. It looks like it takes a lot of blood to attract a shark. Because these are shark infested waters and we see a butt ton of sharks right here. And yet, you know, 30 yards away, they're not even checking it out. So that probably means you're a lot safer in the water if you're bleeding than you think you are. <laughs>